now look at the last division of plant kingdom that is angiosperm. Angiosperms uh, includes a group of plants which flowers. So these are the flowering plants. And the fly can be large, showy, or it can be dull. Okay, and this includes plant of various size and structure, and the size varies from a smallest wolfia to the tallest eucalyptus. And important feature you find in them is the sex organ, that is flower. And flower are considered to be the modified leaf. And this flower bears the male gametophyte and female gametophyte. Let us just look at the structure of flower first. So as discussed, this flower are considered the modified shoot. And this has four worlds present on receptacle. So the outer world consists of number of petals and all together we call them as calyx. And usually they are green in color and provide protection to the flower bud. The inner to it, the world is, consists of petals. So petals are usually large and showy, bright, so as to attract the pollinator. And these petals, again, all together we call them as corolla. And inner to it, we have a male part that is temen, and the innermost one is the female part that is carpal or pistil. So you can see there are four layers, so four worlds present on receptacle. So the outer two are not directly involved in reproduction. So these two worlds are called as accessory worlds, and the inner two are called as okay, reproductive worlds. A plant may have a flower having both the male organ and female part and such a flower are bisexual flower. Or you may have a group of uh, angiosperm where the flower contain either male part or female part. Okay, and such a type of flower are unisexual flower. Okay, you have a male flower and female flower separately. Okay, male flower we call as staminate and female flower we call them as, okay, pistillate. Well, so these are the part where the male gametophyte and female gametophyte develops and each one will produce its own gamete that is male gamete and female gamete. Now let us look at this. Okay, so we'll be discussing about uh, each of the topic here under this male sex organ. Okay, there are Stamens and this stamen are uh, composed. Is that the structure is composed of anther and filament. Anther is a bulby structure where the actual pollen grain are produced, and filament are the slender supporting structure. It can be long or short, it can be fuse or it can be independent. Okay, so inside this, there is a formation of pollen grain that is male gametophyte. Okay, so male gametophyte are produced in the stamen. So let us look at uh, each point with the help of this picture. Likewise, same in the case of female. So here, as discussed here, in the case of flower, we have a female part and the male part. Female part, we call it as gynecium or the carpal and male part, we call it as, okay, antrusium. So talking about male here, the antrusium or the stamen, as discussed, it has a filament, long slender filament and a anther and it is in the anther where the pollen grain develops okay so uh, in the case of anther if you take a cross section of it you find four microsporangium four microsporangium and each microsporangium contains number of microspore mother cell and the structure of this microsporangium the detailed structure of this we'll be studying in 12th standard. Okay, right now let us just see the process of microsporogenesis and development of pollen grain. Okay, so this microspore mother cell present in the microsporangium. So there are four here. Okay, so it is all along the length of the anther. Okay, it's just a cross section of it. Now this microspore mother cell it is diploid. The angiosperm plant body are sporophyte. They are deployed plant body and they have leaves, stems and root and uh, the reproductive part is flower 
and in the flower we have male part and female part and here now we are discussing about the male part okay the male sex organ is called as stamen here and this stamen has anther and filament so in the anther there are four microsporangium and each microsporangium the innermost part has number of microspore mother cell each microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis as you know once a cell undergoes meiosis it, result, it results in the production of haploid cell so the, all the microspores produced are haploid we also know that one cell undergoing the number of cells here one cell if it undergoes meiosis it gives rise to four microspores so one microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce four microspores and all the spores are haploid and the process of formation of microspore is called as microsporogenesis and all the four microspore will further undergo cell division to give rise to male gametophyte or we can call them as pollen grain it can be okay two cells or three cells okay so even if it is two cell finally it become three cells so it is very few celled male gametophyte okay so here we talked about microsporogenesis we talked about pollen grain and each pollen grain contains two male gamete two male gamete in them now let's talk about the female part so the female part the gynoecium part or we can say carpal it has a stigma okay it is the platform on which pollen grain land here and style is a okay very thin passage stigma style and the bulge portion called as ovary okay so it has a stigma style and ovary and inside the ovary there are ovules there is a ovule or megasporangium and each megasporangium contain megaspore mother cell okay so in each ovule there is only one megaspore mother cell which is diploid and this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis and give rise to four megaspores and all the four megaspores are haploid and out of four megaspore three will degenerate and only one remains functional okay it is same in the case of gymnosperm as we discussed earlier okay so in the case of male all the four microspores are functional but in the case of female only one megaspore is functional where three degenerate okay and this single megaspore single megaspore remains functional and undergo further mitotic division and finally give rise to seven celled structure called as female gametophyte or we call it as embryo sac so it has a seven cell but eight nuclei okay let's see here seven cell so this this whole structure is a ovule and the innermost part is uh, taken by embryo sac and this embryo sac is the female gametophyte so female gametophyte means a body bearing female gamete so the female gamete is egg so unlike that of pollen grain okay there are uh, uh, in the case of female gametophyte there is single egg in the case of pollen grain there are two sperm okay so there are sing uh, there is single egg here and other cells okay let us see here uh, this is the structure of ovule and this structure of ovule let us just get familiar uh, okay uh, brief structure of uh, the ovule here so in the case of ovule this ovule is attached onto the ovary here so this is the point where it is attached to the ovary and yeah, it has uh, two layer called as integument outer integument and inner integument outer outer and inner integument and it is discontinuous over here forming a pore called as micropyle and the region opposite to this micropyle is called chalazal region okay so this is micropylar region and this is chalazal region here so here this megaspore mother cell develops into seven celled female gametophyte by undergoing mitosis okay
Well, so here uh, there are three cells towards the chalazal end, which we call them as antiviral cells, and there are three cells towards the micropyla end, we call them as egg apparatus, and this egg apparatus contains one egg and two synergids. Two synergids. So we have a total of six here. Now here, this is the central cell. Okay, and this central cell contains two nuclei, two polar nuclei. So here, if you count the number of cells, there are only seven. Three antibodies, three egg apparatus, and one central cell. But if you count the nucleus, you find eight nuclei because central cell has two nuclei. Okay, so this is about megasporogenesis and female gametophyte and the egg. Now, once the, both the male and female gametes matures here, of course, the anther on the flower, they dehyze and release the pollen grain. And this pollen grain are carried towards the female part by various means. It can be through water, it can be through air, it can be through insects, or it can be through mammals. So, in any, okay, uh, by any agencies, they are being carried towards the stigma of the pistil. Okay, so that transfer of this pollen towards the stigma of the pistil is called as pollination. So, once the pollen grain lands on the stigma here, once the pollen grain lands on the stigma, it will produce or it will germinate and produce pollen tube. And this pollen tube will carry two male gametes and it will be carried towards the ovule. So, here, this is the pollen tube here and this pollen tube will contain, okay, initially this is a two-celled pollen grain. So, in this process, while the fertilization uh, is taking place, the generative cell divide further to form two male gametes here. Okay, so it will move towards the ovule through the micropyle region. First fifth cell followed by two male gametes here, two male gametes. Okay. And these two male gametes, the first one, first it will enter into synergy and one of the male gametes fused with the egg to form zygote. You know that egg is haploid, sperms are also haploid. When they fuse together, it becomes diploid and the structure form is zygote. Okay, so the sperm cell enters the cytoplasm, the synergy and later it will enter into the egg. Okay, thereby, okay, there is a fusion of egg and the male gamete that is called as syngamete that is called as syngamete now we have one more male gamete the second male gamete goes and fuses with the polar nuclei initially you know that polar nuclei it exists as an two nuclei separately later on they will combine to form a diploid structure and this diploid plus one more okay nuclei it forms triploid so this is called as triple fusion. This is triple fusion. So in the case of angiosperm, this is very special and unique because it occurs only in angiosperm. So in angiosperm, during fertilization, there are two fusion. That is the fusion of male gamete with the female gamete. We call them as syngamy. And there is also the fusion of male gamete with that of, okay, two polar nuclei resulting in triploid primary endosperm nucleus that is triple fusion so syngamy and triple fusion since they are two fusion we call them as double fertilization which is unique in angiosperm now after fertilization what happened after fertilization zygote develops into embryo and embryo will further develop okay into multicellular structure and then there is a differentiation of this embryo into other body part. And then primary endosperm nuclei, which is triploid, primary endosperm nuclei, which is triploid, it develops into endosperm. And synergids and antipodals degenerate. Ovules develops into seed and ovary develops into fruit. So here, in this case, the seeds are covered by fruit. Because ovule is inside the ovary. So, ovule develops into seed and ovary develops into fruit. So, here it is enclosed. The seeds are enclosed unlike that of gymnosperm where it is naked. It is not covered. Now, just let's just look at the life cycle of angiosperm here. 
So this is a plant and this is a plant uh, reproductive part flower having male part and female part. Okay, let's look at the female first. First here, female, we have sigma style and ovary here and inside the ovary there is the ovule. So this is the structure of ovule here and the structure of ovule it consists of uh, outer two layer called as integument and inner to it there is the nucleus and one of the nucleus cell become megaspore mother cell or megasporocyte. So till here everything is diploid. Okay, so megaspore mother cell or megasporocyte. And nucleus provide nutrition to the megaspore mother cell here. Now, this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis and produce haploid spores. How many spores? Four spores, that is four megaspores. These are haploid here. Okay, this red color indicates that of haploid stages, haploid spores. And you know that this three will degenerate. Only single megaspore will function and further develop into an female gametophyte or we can say embryo sac and this embryo sac as discussed it has three antiporal cells three egg apparatus consisting of egg and two synergids and two polar nuclei okay so this is seven celled eight nucleate female gametophyte so if you compare the gametophyte and the sporophyte in angiosperm you can clearly see that the angiosperm, okay, gametophyte is limited to few cells and they are, again, they do not have independent existence. Okay, now let us look at the male part here. Okay, stamen has anther and filament. Anther, it contains four microsporangium. Okay, they rest all along the length of anther and each microsporangium Inner to it contain okay the innermost contain number of my uh, uh, microsporocyte or microspore mother cell uh, undergoes meiosis to produce four microspores which are haploid and all the microspores are functional and further develop into pollen grain. So here the pollen grain we have shown is okay it has a structure where uh, there are two layers the outer layer and inner layer. Okay, and then there are two cells that is generative cell and tube cell. This generative cell lies in the cytoplasm of the tube cell. Tube cell is larger in size and generative cell is smaller and cylinder shaped and it lies in the cytoplasm of the tube cell. So this is a two celled pollen grain. Later on develop into three celled. Okay, so this pollen grain once released from the flower, it will move towards, it will be transferred towards the sigma of the Mm, female that transfer we call them as pollination and pollination is carried out by various agencies okay once it land on the stigma this pollen grain germinate to produce a tube okay that is pollen tube and then there it has tube nucleus generative cell will undergo one more mitotic division to give rise to two cells or you can say two sperms here and then here Later, what happens is pollen tube germinate through the sigma style and reaches ovary and then towards the ovule and later on leads to fertilization. Okay, since here there are two male gametes, one sperm fused with egg to form zygote, the later one fused with two polar nuclei to form endosperm nucleus, that is primary endosperm nucleus, and you can see two fusion. The first fusion that is male gamete with the egg, we call it a syngamy, resulting in formation of a diploid zygote. And the second one is that of mm, a male gamete, second male gamete fusing with two polar nuclei results in the formation of a triploid uh, primary endosperm nucleus. Okay, that is triple fusion. Since there are two fusion, we call them as double fertilization, which is unique in angiosperm. Okay, so all these things happens inside the ovary here, ovary and uh, ovule, which is inside the ovary here. And later on, this zygote will develop into embryo and this primary endosperm nucleus will develop into endosperm, which in turn will nourish the developing embryo. And this developing embryo, of course, we know that it's inside the ovule. And after fertilization, ovules develop into seed. So this embryo are present in the seed. 
And once it matures and gets the proper medium and its surrounding, it will germinate to give rise to a new sporophytic plant body. Okay, so this is the life cycle of angiosperm. Now, this angiosperm, based on again various criteria or various uh, features, it is classified into let's say two classes under this uh, that is uh, dicotyledon and monocotyledon. Okay, so let us just look at the difference between these two monocots. Okay, that is cotyledon is a part of embryo in a seed, cotyledons are present in the seed. So monocot includes that of uh, grains like rice, wheat. Okay, they have a single cotyledon. So monocot. And talking about the dicot, there are two cotyledons. So you must have done experiment uh, or observation with that of a uh, gram seed or pulses where uh, you find two co fleshy cotyledons. Okay, so cotyledons. And if you look at the leaf, again, you can easily differentiate between dicots and monocots. Monocots, okay, the venation, the arrangement of the veins, they are parallel. But in the case of dicots, the venation is net like it is a reticulate. Okay, another way to find the difference uh, uh, or you can find uh, another way to find whether the plant is monocot or dicot is by taking the cross section of a stem. If you take a cross section of a stem and mount it under the microscope and observe, you'll find that the vascular bundles that is xylem and phloem, if it is like <coughs> uh, scattered, then uh, this uh, plant are monocots and if it is in a ring shape, proper ring shape, then these are dicots. And the next way to find is you just uproot the plant. If you see that plant has a distinct primary uh, root and then the other lateral root here like this and this is tap root. Such a type of root is tap root and tap root is usually found in dicots. And if you find fibrous like this, if you uh, don't find any um, and let's say uh, primary root here, then uh, it is a fibrous root system, which is a characteristic feature of monocots. Now the next is floral parts. That is, okay, sepal, uh, uh, sepal, corolla, and salmon, and the gynecium. So if you count the number, it can be multiple of three, it can be multiple of four, it can be multiple of five. So if it is multiple of threes, then they are monocot. Monocot, you have a floral part in multiple of three. So here example, in this, let's just look at the perianth here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's multiple of three. Okay, so they are trimerous. Monocots are trimerous. And here, you can count, they are multiple of five. One, two, three, four, five. And again here 5. So if it is multiple of 5 that is pentamerous or if it is multiple of 4 that is tetramerous then they belong to dicot group. Okay so this angiosperm are the flowering plant produce flower where the gametes are produced and gametes are produced on the gametophyte. Gametophyte do not have independent existence and they are present on the sporophytic plant body. Okay and this uh, angiosperms are grouped into monocots and dicots and we can easily distinguish between them by looking at the seed that is cotyledon and looking at the leaves, venation in the leaves or taking a cross section of the stem or root and again we can look at the floral parts. You can just count the number and then say whether they are monocots or dicots. Okay, now next is life cycle and alternation of generation in plant. So in the life cycle of a plant, in the life cycle of a plant, okay, and especially that of, okay, so it can be any plant which produce a sexual reproduction, there is the alternation of generation between gametes producing haploid gametophyte, haploid gametophyte, and spore producing diploid sporophyte. So that alternation, we call it as alternation of generation. So different plants have different patterns of alternation of generation. So there are three, that is haplointic life cycle, diplointic life cycle, and haplodiplointic life cycle. So let us look at each one of them. 
First, in this case, they are usually found in lower algae like Volvo, Spirogyra, and some of the Chlamydominus. The haploidic, most of the plant body is in haploid state, and diploid is limited only to the zygote stage. So here, let's say if the Spirogyra plant body, the Spirogyra is haploid body, and this produces gamete. Gamete is also haploid. Let's say this is male gamete. Here we have female gamete. And when they both fuse, thin gamete fertilization, it gives rise to zygote. So as soon as zygote is formed with this diploid, it will immediately undergo meiosis to produce haploid spores. And this haploid spore germinate to produce gametophyte body. So here you can see that the dominant part is that of a haploid, haploid gametophyte body. And such a type of life cycle, we call it as haploidic life cycle. Now another extreme is that of diploidic life cycle. So just now we discussed about angiosperm. Okay, so the plant body is sporophyte. It is diploid and they produce spores. And the spores in the case of angiosperm and gymnosperm are heterosporous. Male and female spores are different. Okay, they produce microspore and macrospore. So this plant body is sporophyte. Okay, let's just focus on, uh, uh, take the example of angiosperm and then study this. So the sporophytic plant body, let us say mango plant or hibiscus, so they have a uh, plant body which is all diploid and they produce a flower which is a sex organ and in the flower there is salmon and the pistil, uh, they produce again they have a male gametophyte, sorry, um, uh, microspore mother cell and megaspore mother cell, each one undergoes meiosis and when they undergo meiosis they produce haploid spores. Okay, and this haploid spore further undergo development to uh, become a uh, haploid gametophyte. So in the case of male, that is pollen gametoph uh, sorry pollen grain as a male gametophyte, and this pollen grain is only three cells. And in the case of angiosperm, a uh, female gametophyte is embryo sac that is seven cells. Okay, so the gametophyte the cell is limited to few in the case of angiosperm, and in the case of gymnosperm. The female is multicellular structure, but still again, they do not have independent existence. And these gametophyte produce gametes. And the gamete fuse to form zygote. And zygote will further undergo mitotic division to produce a full-fledged plant that is spor sporophytic plant body having root, stem and leaves. And when it matures, it flower and then again the cycle continues. So in this life cycle, you find that the sporophytes are independent and dominant, independent and dominant, and major part of the life cycle we can see is sporophyte. So such a life cycle uh, is called as diploidic life cycle, and you can see alternation of generation here. Diploid alternates with haploid gametophyte, gametophyte to sporophyte, and so on. Okay, like this cycle keeps on going. So examples are figures that is a species of algae. Gymnosperms and angiosperms. Okay, so these two are two extreme. This is haplo uh, diploidic and this is haploidic. So these are two extreme here. Haploidic, we have more of a haploid, and diploidic, we have more of a uh, diploid. Okay, in haploidic, the diploid stage is limited only to zygote here, and in uh, diploidic, uh, the haploid stage is of gametophyte, which is few cells. Or multi, a few cell to multiple cell, okay, having no independent existence. Now we have a third type of life cycle where it is intermediate, that is haplodiplontic life cycle. So these are usually found in bryophytes and teratophytes and some of the algae. So here in this case, you find that there is a gametophyte, which is, uh, let's first take example of uh, mosses. So in the case of mosses, we are, there is a gametophyte which is green, leafy structure which is independent. Okay, <coughs> and they are independent and they do photosynthesis. This gametophyte bears sex organ which in turn produce gametes. So gametophyte is haploid. Okay, and this produce haploid gamete. So this is a haploid state. And these two haploid gametes, male and female, used to form zygote. And now this zygote, what it does is it will undergo a multiple mitotic division to form a structure called as sporophyte. 
and in the case of mosses this sporophyte consists of a structure like uh, foot, theta and capsule and they are dependent on gametophyte. And this sporophyte after uh, it matures some of the cell in the sporophyte undergo meiosis to produce spores, spores will germinate to produce again the gametophytic plant body. So here you can see again the alternation of gametophyte body and sporophyte body here. Okay, so we have a, a complex structure of gametophyte as well as sporophyte. In the case of bryophyte, the gametophyte is dominant and independent, sporophyte is dependent, but it is a multicellular having a complex structure, so haplodiplontic. In the case of pteridophyte, the plant body is independent sporophyte here and this sporophyte produces spores and these spores germinate to produce gametophyte body called as prothallus which is short-lived. Prothallus which is short-lived, they are green, they are independent, they can do photosynthesis, they are usually found near the okay, moist area and they produce gamete. And gamete fused to form zygote, zygote to sporophyte, and the cycle continues like this. And here you can see both the gametophyte complex, okay, gametophyte and sporophyte. Such a type of life cycle which is intimated. We call it as haplodiplontic life cycle. Okay, so that's all about it. Now let us just recapitulate what we have learned in this third chapter. Okay, let us uh, uh, summarize, you can say. So the plant kingdom classification. The plant kingdom classification. Okay, there are uh, three, uh, sorry, five divisions. Five divisions that is algae, bryophytes, pteridophyte, gymnosperms, and angiosperm. And we have discussed each one of them. Like, for example, in the, under algae, we have chlorophyce, green algae, brown, and red. Okay, and all these colors are because of different pigments. And again, we can see certain differences. Likewise, bryophytes. We have liverwort and mosses and then pteridophyte we discuss about them and then this one okay some examples we have taken we have not uh, discussed in detail each one of them but still uh, the oral general features and the uh, uh, life cycle of pteridophyte are discussed gymnosperm again we discuss about its morphological structure reproduction and then um, <coughs> life cycle and finally, angiosperm, we discussed about again here, and then we classified them into dicots and monocots. So, some examples of dicots are sunflower, mustard, pulses, okay, and some of the monocots are grasses and cereals. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.